matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Welcome to David's United Church of Christ this morning, whether you are a first-time visitor or whether you have been here at David's for a long time. We are grateful that you are joining together in the worship of God this morning. It is the third Sunday in Lent. And today, in our languages of love, we are looking at quality time. We have a few announcements this morning. Our United Church of Christ Lenten devotionals are available in our church office for $5 apiece. So come into the office uh, Monday to Thursday between 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., our office hours, to pick one up. We are continuing our Dare to Dream Lenten book study each Monday evening at 7 p.m. If you've not gotten your book yet, they too are available in the church office during office hours. There are a variety of opportunities for children and youth uh, in Sunday school and other ministries. For the full schedule on Zoom links, see your church emails or contact Brenda Francis, our minister for children and youth, for more information. We are coming up soon with Easter, and we have lilies, tulips, begonias, and daffodils available uh, to be sponsored in honor of someone special to you or in memory of loved ones who have passed away. They're available for $7 a piece. You may submit your order to the church office, either through email or phone, uh, to order those Easter flowers. We are conducting a March Madness creative fundraiser in support of our David's UCC Kids, which will benefit our Holy Moly Sunday School program and extended care kids. We are inviting volunteers to bake cookies and candies or make other savory snacks, and they will be offered uh, for sale and pickup on March 18th and 19th. Uh, If you don't want to come to the church, we can do delivery as well, so we invite you either to uh, volunteer, to donate, or to come and purchase items in support of our David's youth. Our March special offering is in support of One Great Hour of Sharing, one of the four special offerings of our United Church of Christ. One Great Hour of Sharing supports disaster relief efforts and human development and human health support services throughout our country and throughout the world. This is one of the most important efforts of the United Church of Christ in which we touch the lives of many people throughout the world year after year. So we encourage you to give generously to one great hour sharing in the month of March. As well, we thank you for your generosity and supporting David's United Church of Christ in this time. We continue to need your support in order to continue our ministry of love, hope, and healing. You can give through our website or through our Tithely app online by setting up direct bank bill pay through your bank or simply by mailing your check or bringing it into our office. Any way you choose to give to David's, we greatly appreciate your commitment and dedication to our community. Over the past few weeks, we have been exploring the interpretations of five love languages. Today's love language focus is on quality time. For those whose love language is quality time, they feel the most adored when another person sincerely wants to spend time with them. They particularly love active listening, eye contact, and full presence. They have a strong desire to have meaningful conversations or to actively spend time doing shared activities. This love language is all about giving undivided attention without any other distractions or multitasking.
Hi, children and youth of David's. You know, I'm outside and the sun feels really good on my skin. And the air and that breeze feels really nice. I'm spending time outside and sometimes spending time outside feels like spending time with God. I think that's the nature and the definition of quality time. Spending time with my heart and your heart. That would be another definition of quality time. Where our two hearts come together and we have time together. And when I'm outside and I see the birds and the trees and I feel this great air I feel like I'm spending time with God's heart and my heart. So spending quality time together is when our hearts connect. I spend time with people, but a lot of times they're on their phone playing a game or on their tablet looking at videos or on their computer doing things. That's time together but it's not quality time. Quality time is when our hearts come together and when our eyes meet and we look at each other and I say, I see you and I love you and I know you and we are connecting. And while we're connecting, maybe we're camping together with family and friends. That's a time where we're together and it's quality time and we're spending time in nature with God and that's quality time. Also having picnics outside. Sometimes just eating lunch outside can be considered spending time with God. That could be quality time. I like laying in the grass and watching the ants. Have you ever done that? Where are the ants going? Watch what they're doing. They're working away. They don't do a lot of resting. They seem to be always working. You know, while we get the luxury to rest, others still need to be working. Like at a graduation party. Somebody's got to be in the kitchen making sure the punch is filled up and somebody has to receive the gifts and somebody had to clean up to get ready for that party. So while we're at a party, sometimes somebody's working. Wedding receptions, that's another great time to spend with family and friends celebrating. But while we're spending that quality time together, there are people who are working. They're making sure that the food is being served. They're making sure that everyone's having a good time. It's like our scripture reading today. Some of us spend quality time together, but there are always people in the background working. We need to appreciate them and think about them and, and let them know we care. And the next time we get together, I'll do the dishes and I'll stay in the kitchen and I'll prepare the food. When my niece got married, we flew a long way to go to her wedding. 
And I worked in the kitchen because they were short staffed and they, they were very stressed. So even though I didn't partake with the party and the dancing and the eating and stay out with everyone, I was still contributing in a very big way. I was helping reduce the stress of the people at the party and they didn't even know it, but I know it and I got to tell you about it 10 years later. So enjoy your quality time together where your heart connects with the people that you are around and your heart connects with God. And remember, while you're relaxing and having a great time, there are people behind the scenes doing the work. And we thank you. From Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Jesus visits Mary and Martha. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When I think of Mary and Martha, I am always reminded of two of my pastors, the Reverends Carol Hoke and Lauren Paget. Those of you who participated in the installation service this summer met them virtually as Lauren delivered the sermon and Carol offered one of the prayers. Carol and Lauren have been a couple since they attended Garrett Seminary a couple decades ago. And like myself, Carol and Lauren are, as I say, refugees from the United Methodist Church in the United Church of Christ. For around 10 years, they were the co-pastors of a new church start appropriately called New Church UCC in my hometown of Peoria, Illinois. Well, New Church gradually petered out several years ago. That little experimental church was an important part of our lives. The summer before I started seminary, I received a grant to fund an internship at New Church. It was a wonderful summer of growth and learning with our small but deeply spiritually engaged congregation. Each Tuesday evening, I would go to Carol and Lauren's home for dinner and weekly planning. Now, Carol and Lauren are both ordained clergy women and both strong community leaders, each in their own right. But every week, without fail, Carol and I would have drinks and conversation in the living room while Lauren made dinner in the kitchen. Falling into these roles seemed natural to them, and I don't doubt are part and parcel of their love languages. Indeed, they are two of my favorite role models of a loving, long-lasting marriage that is truly a partnership. And though I am no Jesus, our dinners in their home always reminded me of our gospel passage. In fact, we would joke about how much alike they were to Mary and Martha. In our scripture lesson, Mary and Martha are not partners but sisters. They and their brother Lazarus are friends of Jesus. And they are not just disciples but truly friends, adding depth to their relationship with him. Jesus is at home with them, away from the crowds and people wanting things from him. 
As in last week's story, they lived in Bethany just about two miles from Jerusalem. These two sisters, who are mentioned in the Gospels several times, were probably among Jesus' closest confidants. They share a love of Jesus and a commitment to his ministry, but it seems they did not share the same love language. Martha was rightly concerned about being hospitable to Jesus during his visit in her home. Indeed, hospitality has always been an important virtue in Middle Eastern cultures. And because of Christianity's roots in that culture, hospitality continues to be an important value in our faith today. If you've been following along in our series, you've probably already figured out that Martha's love language is acts of service. This is how Martha is demonstrating her love of the Lord. She's not only showing her love to a friend, but to her Messiah as well. And indeed, Jesus often, too, demonstrated his love through acts of service. The problem is not Martha's love language or her commitment to service. That is an admirable quality. And I bet you could probably point out many committed Marthas in our congregation, the ones who seem to take care of a little bit or a lot of everything around the church. They're often the unsung heroes who quietly attend to the daily needs of our congregation. The problem, however, is that Martha expects her sister Mary to have the same love language. Indeed, in any relationship, problems are likely to arise, and we expect that others will speak only our love language. Mary's love language, as you've probably guessed, appears to be quality time. No doubt that after Jesus ascended, Mary looked back gratefully on the time she was able to spend with Jesus. And Luke tells us that Mary sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha, focused on her acts of service, says to Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. Jesus does care. He cares that Mary is showing her love of Jesus by listening to him. Both Mary and Martha are showing love, but using different languages. According to Gary Chapman, Jesus did not respond as Martha hoped. He acknowledged her acts of service, yet made it clear that he was also pleased with Mary's undivided attention. Jesus knew the heart of both sisters. For those whose love language is quality time, togetherness is a sign of love. The activities that you engage in with your significant other, family, or friends are not so important as simply being together. The most valuable gift we can give to those whose love language is quality time is our time. Our undivided attention demonstrates our love to such persons. That does not mean dinner while glued to our smartphones. For most people, it means disconnecting from all of our smart devices and truly being with one another. It is those occasions when we indulge in an activity that our partner, family member, or friend enjoys, even if that is not our favorite thing. And these are the things relationships are built upon, which builds up a reservoir of love and creates the memories they will look back on fondly. Once again, God speaks our love language of quality time. Nothing says this more clearly than God choosing to take on human form in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. God chooses to be with us, to be among us, to be one of us. St. Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself 
and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus Christ is God's greatest demonstration of love in choosing to be with us. Is that not the perfect definition of quality time? We see Jesus not only spending quality time with his friends Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus, we know little about Jesus' upbringing with Joseph and Mary and his earthly siblings, but we can be sure that he spent quality time with them. And we know that Jesus spent over three and a half years discipling and teaching those who became his apostles. Of course, he spent plenty of time teaching and healing massive crowds of people, but Jesus very intentionally took quality time to just be with the twelve. Quality time is also necessary in demonstrating our love of God. If quality time is your love language, perhaps you feel closest to God while reading Scripture or other sacred texts in deep prayer or meditation and devotional time. We can only know God by spending time with God. Theologian Elizabeth Johnson of Cameroon writes, in a culture of hectic schedules and the relentless race of productivity, we are tempted to measure our worth by how busy we are, by how much we accomplish, or by how well we meet the expectations of others. And yet, if all our activities leave us with no time to be still in the Lord's presence and hear God's Word, we are likely to end up anxious and troubled. We are likely to end up with a kind of service that is devoid of love and joy and is resentful of others. We do know that Jesus invites all of us who are worried and distracted by many things to sit and rest in His presence, to hear His words of grace and truth, to know that we are loved and valued as children of God, to be renewed in faith and strengthened for service. There is need of only one thing, attention to our guest. As it turns out, our guest is also our host with abundant gifts to give. Our own United Church of Christ and other social justice-minded churches tend to be very acts of service-minded. It is the activist mindset that thinks our faith must always be in action. Martha would be much at home here. But I find that sometimes we can be too critical of Christians who express their love of God with quality time. Our critique being that they might be too individualistic. And we critique the old hymns that talk about me and my relationship with Jesus. We tend to want the communal rather than the individual. But we need both Mary and Martha. And we need both in ourselves. Our activity, our work for justice needs to be fed by quality time with God. It is in our prayer and reading of Scripture and listening to God's voice that we truly discover what God is calling us to do rather than what we want to do. So I encourage each of us to be alone with God this week in that refreshing well of quality time with our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Like Mary, may we sit at Jesus' feet and listen to Him. To God be the glory. Amen. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and the preaching of the prophets. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. 
with the faithful in every place and time. We praise you with your holy name. We rejoice in a perfect victory over the grave that you raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise you with joy, your holy name. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks and broke the bread and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine, and bless us that as we receive them, we may offer you our faith and praise, we may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. Let us pray as Christ our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Eat this, for it is the body of Christ broken for you. Drink this, for it is the blood of Christ shed for you. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, keep and preserve you to everlasting life. Let us pray in thanksgiving for this holy meal. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember me In a Bible cracked and faded by In a sanctuary filled with silent prayer An age to age and heart to heart Bound by grace and peace Child of wonder, child Remember me when the 
color of the sunset fills the sky. Remember me when you pray in tears of joy. Remember me when the children leave their Sunday schools with smiles. Remember me when they're old enough to teach, old enough to preach, old enough to lead. Child of wonder, child of God Remember me Age to age and heart to heart Child of wonder, child of God Receive now this benediction. May the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into these doors. In the name of God, our Creator, and Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Advocate. Amen. There's no tomorrow